Hello viewers, hope all of you are doing great. Uh, in this short video, I'm going to demonstrate you one of our ongoing project which we named as Project Trinity. Project Trinity connects uh, students, faculties and administration of, uh, of, the, of an university or maybe a college also. Before actually going into the demonstration part, let me show you one single slide uh, that might give you, that will give you uh, the idea about like what are the problems or you know, this project Trinity actually tries to solve. In any uh, university, if you consider, if you think, there are certain set of activities which are performed again and again in each and every session. Like uh, obviously a new session starts, and then a new set of students are admitted into the institute in that particular session and then courses are offered for the ongoing uh, for the students who are currently there in that particular institute and then students register courses based on the offered courses and based on the interest of the students and based on the need the students actually choose a set of courses for that particular session and Obviously, lots of in, you know, things happen, but uh, teach, as for example, teachers take class, attendance are maintained, uh, uh, sessional exams are conducted, midterm exams are conducted, and at the end of the session, faculties who are actually responsible for the, a particular course uh, enters the grades of the students um, for that particular course. So all these different faculties enter grades for all these different students for different courses. And once these grades are entered, then uh, these grades are actually processed and results are generated. Once results are generated and declared, students view their results. That happens and again in the next session also more or less the same set of activities are carried out. So Project Trinity, uh, actually see here before actually, uh, here I have shown these different, uh, these rectangles in different colors. Here yellow color means these are the activities which are usually carried out by uh, administration. Administration might represent uh, the, say for example, the controller of examination or maybe the HOD of a particular department or maybe some other you know, stuff uh, like administration, non-teaching stuff there. Different types of administration could be there. Uh, is actually supported by Project Trinity. And then this pink uh, color represents a different type of user. Like these are actually activities carried out uh, by students. So students um, are a different type of user in Project Trinity. And then this green color box, it, these are activities which are carried out by faculty members. So they are treated as a different type of user uh, uh, in Project Trinity. So these activities certainly they can be performed manually and you know like if, if it is if they're performed manually then they will although like things can be done I mean um, things can be maintained but certainly it has its uh, this manual maintenance problem is always associated with it like the time constraint the errors and you know, validation and all this stuff. So uh, our solution actually provides like you do not have to maintain them manually. We'll provide an online uh, platform where these different types of users are cons uh, you know, supported. And based on the roles of the users, you can log into the system and you can perform your activity. Automatically, the housekeeping will be done by our software. So that's the main like sort of goal of Project Trinity. And this is the overview slide, like what actually it does, like in two paragraphs I have written most of the things. And immediately after this slide, we'll, I'll be showing you a demonstration. Trinity provides an online platform to organize where, uh, uh, to your organization, I mean our client organizations, where admin students and faculty members can participate in different academic activities throughout an academic session, as I described. Also, Trinity is accessible from desktop, laptop, as well as mobile phones. What I mean, what I mean by this thing is that uh, the user interface of of, of the uh, web application is actually responsive in the sense that if you're viewing it from a mobile phone, automatically it will adjust uh, its uh, user interface based on the available screen size, and and it will look a bit different in mobile phone than if you're viewing it in a laptop or a desktop. With Trinity, course registration by students, grade submission by faculties, and result generation by administration all becomes only a few few click tasks. That's uh, that's that's our main goal actually.
Now let's um, let's see a small demonstration of the you know, of 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 Project Trinity. Let's uh, go through a small demonstration of Project Trinity. This is the first page of Project Trinity. I mean, it's uh, right now I'm showing you the interface with respect to Tespro University, which is certainly a client of us. Uh, who is using our online platform to manage uh, their students' records and you know, all these different activities. So here, as I said, in, in, in broad sense, there are two types of users, like students and admin. When I say admin, it, it could be admin as well as faculty members also. So, you know, I, I gave you the notion of different types of users. So first, let's see the admin part. In admin, then the first thing is username and password. The user has to give the username and password. So, for example, I give some username, which is actually the controller of exam. So, I'll, I'll come to that point. Now, see, I give username and password. I click on admin login. I can actually click on admin login as well as faculty login. Uh, these, these, you know, you can see that there are like automatically this uh, pop up window comes, appears. Like, click here if you want to enter into the system as a faculty here. Uh, if it is a COE or COE office officer or HOD or department officer. So these type of users are like called as admins, whereas these faculties, you know, if you are faculty, then you'll be clicking here. So right now, say, for example, uh, this user is actually admin. So let's get into the system as an admin. I, I gave a wrong password here, so that's why it's happened. So let me give it right. Um, now, as soon as I give you a right password, um, this particular window comes. Like, who is the user? Like, the name of the particular user and the role of the user. And here, it's you can see the edit profile button is there. Like, the user can actually edit their profile. They, they can write something here. And they can save it. Like that. And then in broad, like, you know, in the topmost level, these are the different types of activities that this particular user, user is allowed to, you know, uh, is, uh, to, uh, to carry out, actually. Like, say, for example, course registration details and grade submission details and different types of operations, actually, different types of reports. Say, course registration details, like, you know, you know, like in every session this happens and course registration is actually a process of a few days. So if uh, uh, the admin wants to uh, like monitor how is it going on, then this particular feature is quite helpful. Here it shows like what is the total number of students who are supposed to do the registration, how many of them have registered, how many of them are and all have not done it yet, total number of programs, how many of have done it completely and how many of them are pending. See, when a single student is has not done the course registration of a particular program, it will be coming as pending. But more or less, uh, it gives the overall statistics at uh, at a particular uh, time. Now, these are different programs. This program wise, now this uh, uh, you know it shows uh, who are the students who have done, who have not done. You know, like if I click here, you'll be able to see. Okay, these are the these. Uh, green color buttons actually they represent these are the students who have done the course registration these are the students who have not done the course registration again if you click on a particular button immediately uh, a window will appear that will give like okay these are the courses that particular student has uh, you know registered uh, uh, and uh, up to that particular semester uh, the result of the student or the previous semester's result of the student some hints about the student thing you know, uh, is displayed there as soon as the user clicks on these buttons. And also, these colors are present. Uh, this immediately gives an idea to the viewer, like, okay, these are the students who have not done the course registration. These are the students who have done the course registration. But again, uh, I'm just trying to show you the overall thing, okay? I mean, there are lots of different features there. Like, say, one another, another uh, important event there is this great submission. Like it is also at uh, you know like a uh, this activity is uh, is performed over a period of time maybe fifteen days or maybe ten ten days right and here if uh, different uh, uh, the user is allowed to actually see the and uh, change the current semester actually it might happen during this coronavirus time actually the classes were conducted online. The, 
there were actually an overlapping of batches like you know two batches simultaneously happens two sessions are uh, you know uh, two sessions were going on even they are going on simultaneously so it might happen that the user actually needs to change the event or uh, change the annotation here they can change like okay i want to see the great submission of 2022 spring semester once it is done select a particular department say for example assam is department click on ok and this is the great submission status of 2022 spring semester it is not yet done let me show you one uh, 2021 autumn semester you can see here total courses are days and receive 13 waiting zero i mean all the courses are actually from that department for all the courses grades are entered you can see uh, another details if you click here again who submitted the grade and forwarded by uh, this grade submission actually is a pro pipeline process the grades are submitted by teachers it goes to hod's hod verifies those grades and it, he or she forwards the grades to the uh, you know admin and again on admin side like send back to hod if any correction is needed to be performed then the coe will actually click on this button the the, the submitted grades will be sent back to the uh, hod and from there hod again can send back the uh, the form to the corresponding faculty where the faculty actually can perform the corrections and again resubmit the grades all these different types of uh, thing or uh, you know the the activities or uh, the features are supported okay and um, other than that like great submissions and all let's see what are the different operations like see admission table managing sliding edit master course like what are the courses offered by a uh, by the university or the institute admin course registration yeah, those are some features certainly um, now specific uh, to the organization i mean uh, admin course registration the course registration is is an activity actually usually which is performed by students but for some reason if a student cannot perform the course registration by himself or herself then uh, from the admin side uh, this activity is actually carried out i did students registered courses it's more or less the same concept here and all these different features are actually supported by uh, on admin side like say um, different things say for example open elective status and all like it's open elective is an in uh, here uh, here um in 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 specifically in desperate university open elective is the type of courses where students have to uh you know compete and in in our universities it's like first in first out uh first in first uh first first come first service uh process actually whoever comes first will get the highest priority so out of a set of courses, the students will choose, okay, I want to uh, take this course, other students will select, okay, I want to take that particular course. It's a sort of queue. Okay. And these queues, uh, the admin actually can see the status of these queues. What I mean by this, if for, for, for example, 461 students are allotted, 17 students are waiting for some reason, they, didn't, they are not allotted, maybe the queues are full or some other things are happening. So the admin can actually uh, download these allotment things and they can see. And these are the different queues. I mean, each course is considered as a queue here, like 75 seats are there, 36 students actually have enrolled, I mean, are allotted for that particular course. They are keeping all the seats, number of seats available for these different courses, the same 75, but they can vary actually. And this uh, an underlining algorithm actually decides which student will get what course based on their you know like obviously first in first out but uh, a student is actually allowed to select more than one course based on their priorities like this is my first priority course this is my second priority course like that and this. so if the user clicks here then the user will be able to see okay these are the list of students who are allotted for that particular course along with some details about the course okay and yeah uh, now see this is a big 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 screen view but if the user views this thing in a small window like this a mobile phone or something then it, it will automatically be displayed like this yeah and if the user clicks here things will be you know things are responsive although the responsiveness is um, it's an uh, it was not the major focus when we were assigned the task um, at, uh, no, specifically for the admin that uh, no, faculty part usually it is considered that they will be doing the thing in a big screen but again that's i'm just saying that thing okay but 
being responsive is certainly uh, uh, you know nowadays it is like sort of uh, implicit feature which has to be supported so we try to uh, keep it uh, uh, like sort of responsive uh, on a big screen they appears in a different way on a small screen they appears in a different way you don't have to scroll left and right uh, only up and down you have to do certainly but not left and right to view the content of the page and along with that uh, see there are like different different features are there and i'm just you know showing you some of them at least it's if you see it in a small screen it will look something like this if you see it in a big screen it'll look something like this and uh, different types of uh, reports like printer results it printing the grade submission form verifying the cgpa of a student and print the grade cards like see, all these different features are represented by a different circles and the user interface is uh, you know designed in such a way that that is concerned uh, with that particular feature only okay and uh, okay that's all i mean see print the grade cards of a particular session of a particular program it will print the grade cards like this immediately based on the you know, template provided to us we generated the grade cards like this and uh, and certainly there's some uh, same way there are other features other reports you can generate but that's uh, more or less about the admin part let's see the student part now in again in that in admin part again there is something called as faculty let me show you first the faculty thing so for example this particular user uh he or she can enter into the system as a faculty so i'm clicking on faculty login again i typed the wrong password let me type it the right one here okay i'm clicking on faculty login again i typed the wrong password sorry Mm, faculty login okay okay as soon as i click on this uh you can see the name of the faculty and the you know uh the department and the designation of the faculty like that and this is certainly responsive i mean a small window automatically it will readjust and in a big window automatically it will readjust the available uh and it will make use of the available space uh to display its content and then here my classrooms different activities could be, uh, can be performed by the faculty like say edit profile as like the profile can be edited by the faculty and the classrooms here my classrooms what are the classes going on like a uh, spring semester 2022 in computer science and engineering these are the classes uh, which are going on right now see here you might be thinking like why not uh, why all the classes are being displayed here why not only those classes which are taken by the particular faculty yes uh, that's the thing i mean uh, by default uh, for the faculty all the classes which are going on in the particular department will be displayed but if the hod assigns uh, an offset of classes this assignment is done then automatically only those assigned classes will be visible to this particular faculty the system is actually uh, you know like you know flexible even if the uh, see here one thing i realized in terms of uh, software things like uh, when we deploy a software in an institute we have to introduce the features slowly and gradually instead of bombarding the users with lots of different features and constraints what we can do is we can uh, slowly slowly gradually we can introduce different features so initially we started to now this is a general thing i mean as soon as the user logs in the faculty logs in he can see all these different classes but later on uh, what we had done is that okay now hod actually can assign uh, uh, the, the courses to the faculties and that way the faculty will be able to see only those courses are uh, added uh, the faculty will be able to uh, you know, do some actions only on those courses which are assigned to him or her but i'm just showing you the general view of the thing and this is the class and then he, here you can see 236 students if the faculty clicks on that uh, thing that class you'll be able to see the details of the class along with 236 students all these different students are not from a single program they're from different batches these are 21 ceb i mean computers sorry it's uh civil engineering btec civil engineering 21 batch um btec computer science 20 batch three students maybe some backlog courses or something this is 21 csb bats 44 students like that different batches are there actually 
some old batch students most probably these are backlog students and new batch from different programs even uh, that are in that particular class so one faculty might not actually handle all these different classes uh, might be different faculties will handle these different classes let's uh, click on any one of these bats as you can see if i click there automatically this window will appear and from here uh, the faculty will be able to enter the grades whatever the grades that particular student uh, uh, secured in that uh, uh, particular now right now it is showing grade status is not submitted obviously it is not submitted but the faculty can actually fill up these grades uh, let me show you one thing here say for example this is one student only one student i'm giving the grade here since i'm, I'm showing you it's uh, it's connected with my local uh, local database so it will not do any change in the actual database so i'm giving an o to this particular student and once it is done and then i can click on this submit grades button and one thing here and i go also i can download the form i mean what grade i have submitted if i click you can see uh, it'll, it'll download this form. only one student is there and right now these names are not coming because i have not submitted but if i submit and after that if i download the names will automatically appear like once again i want to tell you one more thing here like along with submitting the grades it might happen that the student actually has mistakenly you know taken the particular course the student is actually not attending any class for that course is not appearing for any exams in that course so in that case what the faculty can do is he or she can actually remove the student from here okay and uh, right now you might be thinking well, if removal is allowed then most probably it might happen that actually a student had is attending the classes for that particular course but he has not registered that course uh, so in that case uh, the faculty actually can add a new student in that particular course so uh, students uh, the faculty only has to write the role number of the student automatically all the details will be you know uh, extracted from the database uh, say for example let me type here one role number csm20001 this is a valid student as soon as i press tab from my key the name of the student is coming like you know these details and then if the faculty wants to like along with the grade he wants to include the student if the grade is not yet declared then he can leave it empty and then course type it is required i mean what type of course it is is it a core course or elective or open elective audit or add-on course these different types of courses have different meanings and they are important in when we generate the you know the, the certificate and the results whether the particular student have actually completed all the necessary uh, requirements uh, to get the degree so at that time these these informations are useful so for that reason we try to capture it here because uh, the same course actually uh, can be a core course for a particular student then it could be an elective course for another student it could be an open elective course for some other student so uh, in that sense the faculty actually have to uh, has to select the, the the category of the course with respect to this particular student but anyhow those are some obviously uh, details and so you can see these different features are uh, not supported and these features are uh, we initially uh, like when we developed this application for the first time we came up we came with a very set of like sort of minimum set of features and then based on the when we interact with the actual users of these applications well, based on their requirements and their, their uh, you know uh, uh, need uh, we uh, added uh, these different 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 features and again this is again uh, it's a um, responsive interface it means if I make it small things will appear in this way and but certainly they, it could it is up you know one user can actually operate operate this 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 uh, interact with this application from a mobile phone also or from a small screen also certainly it is not a mobile phone but certainly you can see the screen is smaller here as soon as the screen gets bigger automatically uh, things are readjusted so once these grades are uh, done then the faculty can submit the grades once uh, it will ask like whether you seriously want to submit or not yes certainly uh, and then submit it now once it is submitted it will be written like who submitted the grades and you know all the things and the faculty will not be able to do any change here anymore and if the faculty downloads the form this this fact will be displayed here okay this is the course instructor's name and on this particular date the grades are submitted now this grades will actually will be verified by head and once it is verified then only it will go through uh, it will go to the controller of examination and from there results will be generated anyhow let me show you uh, the stuff here.
Now, uh, so this is more or less the faculty's tasks, and if the faculty, uh, these are classroom certainly, yep, I have shown you. Same thing here, here also if the faculty wants to change the uh, session, he or she is allowed to change the session. Like say, I'm showing you right now the classes uh, which were conducted on 2021 autumn semester. Right now, 2022 spring is going on. Here it is 2021 autumn. So for example, you can see here, 81 students are there. Uh, like uh, CSB 20 bats is there, CSM 21 uh, bats is there. 26 students from that bats, 58 from that bats. All these different grades, I mean, so, uh, for both these uh, batches, the grades are submitted. Now, if this batch grade is submitted by Monisha Devi, these are submitted grades, so certainly I cannot uh, do any changes here. And then here it is submitted by different faculty. As if, as I said, no, different groups might be handled by different faculties. Here it's a different faculty who submitted these, these grades. Here. Okay, and then my classrooms, like that, okay? Uh, we... Uh, that's uh, that's more or less the faculty part. Now let's uh, let, let me show you the another part here. The HOD part is certainly there. HOD office assistant part is there, but uh, more or less they will have the same sort of admin uh, view. Let me show you the user a uh, student view. As soon as the user clicks on the student view, let me write here a roll number say uh, CEM twenty one zero zero two. Or I know that's a valid student. And um, let me write this. I click on login now this is the student view here as soon as i log in the student will be able to see what's the name of the student what program what is the role number what is the current semester what is the department what is the school along with that what are different operations the student can perform here yeah? and it's again it's a uh, mobile view is also possible here you can see if it is viewed in a mobile phone it will be it will look like this and if it is on desktop it will look like this a different uh, task the, the student can do is the say for example current semester right now in this particular semester what is the status of the student uh, currently that particular student has registered like six courses 18 credits out of which one is um, open elective not out of which actually six courses 18 credits one open elective okay as I said, no open electives are sort of key based system uh, uh, has to uh, specify the priorities and all those different things are supported. Okay, and go to the course registration. If the student wants to do some changes, like say for example, um, now this particular course, suppose it was taken mistakenly, he or she wants to change this particular course. It is possible just by going to course registration. And again, you see here, these course registration dates are controlled by the admin. If dates are, I mean, if, uh, you know, uh, the admin still allows, like, you can do changes within that period of time, if the user clicks on go to course registration, then only this page will appear. Uh, if it is not within that time limit, uh, allowed time limit, then certainly this page will not appear. This page will appear as a, like, closed message or something. But anyhow, uh, just for this demonstration purpose, I actually uh, now extended the date. But anyhow, that's um, specific to the uh, no, application, certainly. Um, now, select your um, courses. Now, how, how do the students uh, do their course registration? Based on their semester, they will be clicking on a particular semester. They will be selecting, like, okay, these are the add-on courses. If the user clicks here, this list will appear. And from this list, the user has to select some of the courses. Now, these open elective things, say, for example. And this is, again, has its mobile view. Uh, most probably here we have to do some upgradation, but then also this page is actually uh, like you know, the user can view this page on a mobile phone or on a small window actually properly. All the information is there. The user do not have to do left and right scrolling, only the up and down scrolling. Um, along with that, say for example, this open elective thing, if the user clicks on this view current status, like when the user wants to see uh, select open electives, so for example, priority one, priority two, priority three. Three priorities are, uh, are needed to be specified by the student. So if he clicks or she clicks there, it will see the list of the offered open elective courses. The, the student just have to select the, 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 the course he or she wants to take. Okay, and so once it is done, like while uh, selecting that course, since it is a queue based, uh, based uh, you know, like approach, he or she might want to know what is the status right now for each and every queue. Each course is a queue actually. Right now, see, this uh, queue has 36 students out of 75 seats. A lot of seats are there. I mean, basically, the student can actually choose any one of these scores because here it is almost full. 
but other than that some courses are yet very empty i mean this 75 most probably for this particular semester they have allowed this number could change i mean the admin can change this number and they always do not need to be the same number for some uh, courses for some q the size could be only five or six for some other q the size could be 100 also um, uh, that's a dynamic thing the admin can change these these parameters and immediately they will be reflected here okay and if they if the student clicks here again who are the students who, who got already you know got their seat confirmed it, the list will appear so these uh, different type of uh, you know features are supported and um, again in home the previous semester results if the if the students wants to see then as soon as the student click there it will show you the grade cards of the student uh, till that particular semester this this student is in second semester right now results yet not declared but uh, yeah let me show you one example where the student is an old student so so for example csm 2001 let me see if it is there I click on login and previous semester this student is in see this is the first semester result of the student second semester result of the student and third semester result of the student and this fourth semester result is pending and the student is currently in fourth semester so automatically these things are happening actually without uh, this housekeeping is properly done that is a main goal i mean the user only interacts uh, only performs their own part and the connections are made by our software our platform and this payment receipt is a need like they have to upload their payment receipt this receipt will appear here but since it is connected with my local computer this receipt is not visible but had uh, in the actual server in the uh, the the you know uh, the the online version of these applications for that particular university if the user is clicking on this payment receipt along with this number actually the receipt will also appear here and then this logout button but say let me click on this logout button before going uh, before actually ending this demonstration let me tell you one another feature here get password option here for different types of users we have this for different users we have this get password option i mean this is a otp based uh, you know password recovery system like if the user forgot forgets their password then uh, what will happen is like uh, using by clicking on this get password I'm just showing you the get password option for a uh, student. So the student have to enter the role number here. When the student enters the role number, automatically an email will be sent to that particular student uh, in the you know, registered email ID. And from there, uh, that from that OTP actually, uh, the student will be able to using that OTP, the student will be able to reset the password and continue the work. So uh, that much only like an overview of our ongoing uh, project, which we are constantly working on and we're trying to modify, uh, we're trying to add new and new features there based on users need uh, from our own, uh, I don't know, like um, experience and suggestion as our own, uh, our own contribution from our part, from their needs. Also, we, you know, add some features and, um, you know in terms of everything maybe in terms of functionality maybe in terms of look and feel in terms of everything we are constantly working on this project we're trying to uh, you know making it more and more and more um, friendly for the users hope people uh, enjoyed and um, yeah well like if you think this software could be useful for anyone um, now we would like to uh, provide our service to those people so these are, uh, that's all then for the time being. If you have any queries or anything, then certainly you can contact us in, in, in the you know, given email ID. Thanks viewers uh, for watching and for your time. See you again.